This flare on the surface of the Sun announced the arrival of Solar Cycle 24. It is very likely we will see an increase in these eruptions from now through to the end of the year 2013. A phenomenon associated with solar flares is the appearance of sunspots, dark cooler areas on the Sun's photosphere. The number of sunspots visible increases and declines on an approximately 11 year cycle, the solar cycle. This current cycle is the 24th cycle since 1755, when recording of solar sunspot activity began. This current cycle should peak sometime in 2013. The Sun is most active when sunspots are at a maximum. The solar flares associated with an active Sun eject clouds of charged particles, sending them flying through space. When these charged particles collide with the Earth's atmosphere, they can cause catastrophic disruptions of high voltage power lines, creating widespread power outages. The northern lights, Aurora Borealis, also appear at times of solar activity. Charged particles streaming from the Sun interact with our ionosphere, creating spectacular displays of northern lights. If you are interested in astronomy and our relationship with the Sun, it is possible to observe this evolving solar cycle with some very basic equipment. A digital camera with an appropriate filter is all you need. The Sun's rays are intense. Pointing your unprotected camera at the Sun may damage it. For a filter, you can use an inexpensive welder's glass, a special filter used by welders to reduce the blinding light created while welding. I mounted this welder's glass and the camera on a tripod. Be certain your filter is secure. You don't want it falling off and exposing your camera to the unfiltered sun. Remember that observing the sun can be dangerous. Looking directly at the sun can seriously damage your eyes. And never look at the sun with binoculars or a telescope. Eye damage is instant and irreversible. If using this filter with your camera, do all focusing and image alignment on the viewing screen. If your camera has a separate direct viewfinder, make certain it is viewing through the filter and not looking at the unfiltered sun. With the filter secured in place, focus on the sun and capture an image. I zoom to create the largest possible image. You may have to experiment with camera settings to get a properly exposed image of the sun. I use manual mode with my camera and set the shutter speed to 1 2500th of a second and the f-stop to 8. Viewing the images on your computer, you should see some dark spots on the sun's surface. These are sunspots. The size and numbers of these can predict solar flares. Flares occur in active regions around sunspots. If you capture images over consecutive days, you will discover that the sunspots move. The sun is rotating. There are other ways to safely observe the sun. View our video on the transit of Venus for instructions on viewing the sun by projecting its image. If you own a telescope, there are commercially made solar filters that allow direct viewing of the sun. This filter is made with special mylar sheets. Once installed, it becomes possible to capture images through the eyepiece of the telescope. If attempting this, only use a filter designed and constructed for use with your telescope. Any failure of the filter could result in instant and permanent eye damage. If you successfully capture some sunspot images, you may want to compare your results with those found at NASA's sunspot page. This site displays live images of the Sun. You will also find predictions about the current solar cycle and the probability of intense solar flare activity. We have more astronomy related videos and activities at our website, hyloroad.com. Follow the videos link.